Lisa Dahl. There are many ways that God describes our salvation to us in Holy Scriptures, and we've looked at those over the past few weeks. Maybe you could remember some of them. For those who have lost the battle against sin, God sent his champion who would win the victory for us. To those who have nothing but death, God sent his son who was the gift to this whole world, which means eternal life. To those who thirst for something, anything, and will chase after something or anything, Jesus brings us waters that will quench every thirst, and we need no other drink. Today we have in scriptures the idea, the picture of blindness and sight, darkness and light to describe what Jesus did for us. And let's hear how God talks of it through the Apostle Paul. You can find that page 9 in your bulletins. This is what Paul wrote to Christians living in Ephesus. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, and do not participate in fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things that are done by people in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes things visible. Therefore it is said, Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is God's word. Christ's light shines on us, a picture of our salvation, a reminder on how we are to live. Paul, talking to believers in Ephesus, says that they were once darkness. We understand what he's getting at, but I think we need to think more clearly about what he is saying there about believers in Ephesus and about believers here in this room today. Notice he says they were darkness. Not they were in darkness, not they were struggling because of darkness, they were darkness. God has to tell us this about ourselves because we would never believe it, but it is true. All humans are born in sin. All humans, after the fall into sin, are born evil. We are darkness. It's so easy to look at all the things that are wrong in this world, all the things that, that people do to each other and say, that's sin, that's bad, that's evil, but connect the dots, it comes from humans. Humans are the darkness of this world. Humans, people choose to hurt, people choose to hate. Those in darkness, those who are darkness, are dark because they are ignorant about who God is. They are ignorant about what love really is. They're darkness because evil is all they can do, and darkness because in the end, the grave and hell is all that awaits. But the amazing statement of salvation is that Paul said to believers, you were darkness. The past tense. Now you are light, Paul says. Now you are light. Not in the light, light. How did that happen? What did they figure out? Did these Ephesian Christians, did they somehow learn the secret of, of, of no longer having darkness, but somehow they admit this light by figuring out how to please God, how to love, how to be good? Well, notice what Paul said. Light in the Lord. This is the truth, again, a statement of our salvation. Christ came and brought us into the light, 
more than that, Christ made us light. He is our light. By this, we're simply to remember the fact that though we were darkness, though we were evil, and that was all we could know, Jesus came and his light shined on us, no longer ignorant because through his holy word we know who God is and we know who we are. Trusting in Jesus, we see that he did everything we need for heaven, all of our sin, all of our evil, gone, paid for on the cross. But more than that, we stand before God as perfect and holy because God is seeing Christ when he looks at us who trust in him. You are light. There is no darkness that you have committed that this light does not outshine. There is nothing that you can do that will take the light and make it darkness. Christ is our light, and therefore, my dear friends, you know what that means. Forgiven, and more than that, eternal life. A statement of salvation. You are light in the Lord. And Paul mentions that, the fact of what we were and what we now are, because he wants to drive home to us an important truth that we need to hear again and again. What do you do with that information? Well, certainly comfort yourself with it, yes, of course. But it also is an encouragement to us on how we are living and our, how we are to live as children of the light. What did Paul say? Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord and do not participate in fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things that are done by people in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes things visible. whole point of reminding us where we were but now what we are is to keep encouraging us to live as what we are how silly it would be how silly it would be for that man that we read about in the gospel of John the the blind one from birth the guy who would never seen anything in his life how silly it would be for him after Jesus gave him sight and now he's seeing for the first time in his life how silly it would be for him to immediately put a, a blindfold over his eyes and to walk around stumbling he had sight I live as blind anymore We were darkness. We know where that leads. We know what it does. Live as children of light. Try to learn what pleases the Lord. Do not participate in deeds of darkness. Obviously, right? Why would you go back to that? It's sad, isn't it? This world is still filled with darkness, and it always will be until the Lord ends it. But even sadder is the truth that I think if Paul were writing these words to us today in this little town, I don't think he'd be able to see, say it is shameful, the things people do in secret. For we live at a time when the shameful things are not done in secret. They are done out in the open. They are celebrated. They're trending on Twitter. They're shown to all the world. They're codified into law. They're said to be human rights. The darkness is pretty dark. You are light in the Lord. When it's very dark out, that's when light gets to shine the brightest. We think about how our Lord wants us to go forward in this world, to be the light of this world. You can think of the darkness and the opportunity before us when it's very dark out to be that light, and there's always a challenge and there's always a blessing. The challenge is that when it's very dark out, and you are the light. Everyone will see you. And we know the darkness hates the light. 
Oftentimes, Christians are afraid to shine because they receive such hatred from the world. But more than that, isn't it true that sometimes we do participate in the darkness? When you think of the darkness of the world, it's easy to pick out how dark it is. You can see it, men living as women, women living as men. Supposed health care where we kill our unborn. But the vitriolic way we speak about each other when it comes to who, what we believe or what we vote for, that's the darkness. It's all around us. Do not participate in that. Expose it. This is what our God wants. How? Well, again, light makes things visible. You know the truth of God's word. You know what is true and not true. You know what is evil and what is good. More than that, the blessing that comes when everything is so dark is that you truly can shine and bring light that people desperately need. The sad fact of the matter is the people all around us in darkness do not know that they are darkness. They do not know that they are asleep in death the death of spiritual slumber. They don't know this. They think of themselves as woke. They think of themselves as enlightened. But you have the true light. And part of that blessing, we need to make sure that we never do what Jesus warned us against. He told us that no one lights a lamp and then covers it. That'd be silly. Sometimes when you are the bright light, and that is what you are, you are the light of the world, that's what God calls you. Sometimes when we are that light, we might have the same prayer that Jesus warned us against. When he talked about the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, you remember that one, right? Two men in the temple, a Pharisee and a tax collector, the Pharisee did this prayer, which we should never do. But again, the temptation is there because we are the light. Lord, I thank you. That I am not like these other people, these sinners, these people who do awful things. I thank you that I do good things. And then the tax collector simply would not look to heaven but said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. When you see darkness in this world, and by that I mean the people of this world who are still spiritually dead, what do you see? Do you see people you hate? Do you see people you can't stand? Do you see people that you think you are better than? May it never be. We were darkness. We are no better than anyone else. The light that we have does not come from us. The light that we are has been Christ. So as we look into the world, we see the brightness that we can shine. And may it be the echoing of the hymn that Paul quotes at the very end of our reading. When we look, we want to simply shine by saying to the world, Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Amen. Please stand. And peace of God which goes beyond all of our understanding, may it guard and keep us through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us confess the light of the world according to the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and